Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about the things that I've learned since I started eating healthy. I've been trying to eat healthy since about March of last year, so almost about a year. I've never like eaten horribly, but like I definitely didn't really pay attention to ingredients. I wasn't like eating super, super healthy, but I also wasn't like eating super bad like fast food every day. It's not like it was an extreme transition, but these are just some things that I've learned since I started eating healthy. I feel like healthy is just a general term. It's just like changing whatever based on whatever you need. So I'm not vegan. I'm not against vegans. Like I think that's pretty cool, but I like me some chicken. So <laughs> when it comes to eating healthy, I pretty much just focus on chicken and turkey. I've been kind of steering away from red meat and pork and all those things. So when it comes to eating healthy for me, I mean mostly dairy free and just really conscious about the ingredients. Like when I pick something up maybe to buy or to try i always look at the ingredients and i feel like that is like a big thing is to always pay attention to your ingredients and make sure that you can pronounce everything hopefully it doesn't have too many ingredients to where you're having to read it for like 12 years that's probably one thing that you need to steer clear of and they should be whole food ingredients i really like lara bars because it's just like dates apples almonds there's chocolate in some of them which is fine as long as it's dairy free honestly i think chocolate is a great thing because this isn't even on my list but one thing I, that i've learned since eating healthy is dark chocolate is sweet to me now i love me some good dark chocolate and yes it has cane sugar in it but you gotta have some things and of course i'm wearing my iconic like plaid pants you know what else would i be wearing but that's besides the point so if you want to start eating healthy this year these are some things that might help you things that i've learned the hard way <laughs> some of these are like saving money tips i think i'm gonna do a full separate video focusing on saving money but there will be some things in here just because i've learned them whenever i first started eating healthy i really liked meal prepping for me i ingredient prep more for like lunches i do meal prep where i put like a grain of protein veggies it's like in a container prepped for the week just because that's easier for lunches but what i've learned really works for me is ingredient prepping or food prepping whatever you want to call it so like i'll make a batch of quinoa i'll make a batch of roasted vegetables i'll make a batch of whatever and then i can add stuff into it whatever if that's like dinners recently i've been doing a lot of just meal prepping where i have my stuff just because it's just way easier that way and i found a way for me to be able to do that without hating it when i used to do it i would get so tired of it especially with quinoa i like quinoa i can tolerate it but i have to have other stuff with it if i had quinoa like four days in a row even if i had like roasted veggies and chicken on it that had seasoning on it i would get so tired of it then i finally added a bouillon cube to it and it was the most amazing discovery ever so if you have a hard time eating quinoa you literally just pop a bouillon cube or bouillon paste or cook it in chicken or vegetable broth whatever you have that's one thing that has like changed the game quinoa is very plain it just tastes kind of like glance to me but for the past like three months i haven't had plain quinoa so now I can eat quinoa all day every day by itself with stuff. I love it. Going along with meal prepping, do not make so much, like don't get so obsessed with like making a lot of things that you make so much food that you can't eat because the thing with healthy food is pretty much everything, just expect it to last a week. And that was really hard for me in the beginning because I'm used to food lasting like a week, a week and a half, maybe two weeks. But whenever you're working with whole food ingredients, veggies, fruits, things like that, that's another thing. Just figure out a way to use your leftover food prep stuff because if you run out of the main base, then like you gotta have something else just throw it in with some spinach. One thing that I've learned goes bad really fast and smells really bad is beans. I can't remember if it's beans and corn, but I know that one of those things smells so bad. But that was also the canned kind. So I used to use canned beans and canned corn and just drain it and rinse it at the beginning of the week and then I'd use it throughout the week. But I didn't used to use beans that often. But now like I would go through a whole can like easily. Over the summer I made this quinoa salad. I'll probably make it again this summer just because it was so good and it has so many fresh whole food ingredients in it but after a week oh that smelled rank i say just expect everything to last a week on like the fifth or sixth day if you haven't eaten it freeze it that's another thing that i've learned i used to be so against freezing i'd be like oh my goodness that's like a thing that your grandma does sorry that i ever doubted you because you're geniuses if i've had spinach for a while and i can tell that it's about to start going green i just pop it in the freezer and i'll use it in my smoothie still freeze it freeze it freeze it 
Oh, oh, another thing that I freeze. I made like this big batch of black beans because I started making beans from scratch, like from dry beans in the crock pot. So I make like a lot at once and then I just froze it all in one of my like reusable silicone bags. Make big batches of beans, especially if you are buying dry beans, just make a huge batch in your crock pot. There you go. And then you got beans for like the next month. Speaking of not making too much food, if you do do that and it goes bad and it smells bad and you need to throw it out, don't throw it away in the trash can. Compost, compost 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 even if you don't have like an over-the-counter compost i really want to get one of those or at least when i move out my picture frame is so crooked oh gosh that's embarrassing have i never noticed that oh gee wow that's gonna bother me now if you have a backyard a place in your backyard that you don't go just throw the scraps in the ground so i just have a big glass pickle jar that i washed out and reused and once it gets full i just take it out and then that's like fertilizer and that's taking a lot less space in your trash can and the landfill put those food scraps in your backyard so that they will properly return to the earth now we're getting on to like eating things that I make. Whenever I used to drink coffee every day, I would make cold brew. If you love cold brew, if you like iced coffee every day, I recommend you do this because it is so much cheaper than having to buy like Starbucks whatever every day. And it's so good. I didn't normally do like a half of a cup to like a whole mason jar of coffee grounds and whenever you drain it. I do it through like a nut milk bag just because whenever I was making almond milk, it came with two. So I was like one for cold brew, one for almond milk. And then at the very end, I also do it through a coffee filter just because I just cannot stand there's like a little bit of sediment that comes through I think that's just with fine coffee 100% if you're buying coffee just for doing cold brew get it coarsely ground that's another thing I've learned this last time I also bought decaf coffee finely ground and trying to do it through like a french press and trying to do it through like a reusable k-cup it just puts out that nasty sediment at the bottom and I can't enjoy the last half the decaf because I don't drink coffee anymore Whenever I do that, that coffee obviously takes up a little bit of the room and then I just fill up the rest with water. You got some real concentrated cold brew. Okay, the other thing that I used to make, I don't really make anymore, I need to get back into it, is making your own nut milk, especially if you use milk a lot. I bought some almond milk like last week or the week before just because I was making a lot of things and I didn't wanna have to make almond milk. <laughs> it's been really handy having it. But the only thing about homemade almond milk is it does go bad within a week. The reason that I liked making it is because you can tailor it to how much you want to make. So I would make like two cups for the week, which really isn't a lot of milk. It's like this much. If you're someone who doesn't drink a lot of milk, but you like to have it on hand for things like oatmeal and baking stuff and splashing in your coffee, whatever it is, I would definitely recommend you make your own. It's really easy. All you do is blend up almonds with water. If you buy almond milk, yeah, it's a lot more, but there's also preservatives in it to where it won't just last a week. So it's not like, you know, this milk I've had, I've had it for at least two weeks and it hasn't gone bad yet. There's like two sides to it. If you're a convenience person, just buy your almond milk if you don't mind. But if you want to know your ingredients, just nuts and water, just go for it. And it's super easy. Oh, and the other thing I didn't used to do, the first time that I made nut milk, I just threw out the pulp. But then I started saving it and putting it in the freezer. One time I did that, I baked it in the oven for like however long. And then I blended it up in my blender and boo. You just made your own nut milk and you have almond flour now too. I would say that that's pretty good. Sorry if this bothers you that I'm not in the center, but I really like Benova Hicks and you can see my cute little pillow. This is a big thing about Whole Foods. Sorry I'm like pointing at you with my pen. I just really like this. It's really fun because I used to want to be a teacher when I was growing up. Feels like I'm teaching a class. What I said in the beginning, how I like to mainly eat whole foods, I realized that you can replace a lot of things with just whole foods. Since I don't eat dairy, I don't eat sour cream, I don't put cheese on anything. Oh, mayo, duh. Like I replaced mayonnaise with like avocado or sour cream with avocado, whatever it is. And instead of ketchup, I just use tomato. Just use the plant. Sometimes I'll use little lettuce leaves instead of buns. Going along with buns, for the longest time I was like trying to not not eat as much bread but honestly I just like bread it's really not that bad for you if that you don't get don't get white bread if you get anything from this video do not buy white bread I honestly don't know what's wrong with it <laughs> I just know it's not good for you what I realized I've been buying like whole wheat bread for like a year now is whole wheat bread is so good to me it has like so much more flavor than white bread my mom said that whenever we were kids we would not eat whole wheat i think it's just because like it looked healthy so i didn't want to eat it and i said that i wasn't that unhealthy <laughs> going along with bad stuff as i said for the 15th time i don't eat dairy you can still live if you want to get away from dairy you can still like eat mayonnaise you can eat sour cream you can eat cream cheese they all have alternatives i've never tried them just because for me it wasn't too big of a deal cutting it out the one thing that i have 
had to find an alternative to was ice cream. There are a lot of, uh, I wouldn't say a lot, like it's not like, this is the dairy filled ice cream, this is the dairy free ice cream. It's more like, this is the dairy ice cream, this is the dairy free ice cream at the store, obviously. That's what I was talking about. I've tried many different kinds. I've tried Ben and Jerry's, I've tried Nautamu, I've tried So Delicious. And then the Target brand is actually really good and they're a lot cheaper than all the other ones. It's like $3.99 instead of like $5.99, which for a little pint of ice cream, that's expensive, I know. Then moving on to like sweeteners, I pretty much use coconut sugar for baking, for like coffee or tea. Oh, I forgot I had tea over here. It's been stinging 25 minutes and this is still hot because of this cup. I don't even have a lid on it. So for like coffees, teas, sometimes smoothies, I use like like maple syrup, honey, and agave nectar. And they're not processed. But when I say maple syrup, you best get that 100% maple syrup. Do not be getting no Aunt Jemima's pancake syrup. That is full on high fructose corn syrup. Make my rant about maple syrup. I should have talked about this with the nut milk, but I used to make my own almond butter. I made it a few times. I made my own peanut butter once. It just takes so long. It's so much easier to buy a jar. And to me, I feel like it's kind of cheaper. When you use a cup of nuts, you get like three fourths of a cup of butter, especially if you're using it a lot for baking and stuff like that. People who have a Vitamix and it takes like literally one minute to make some almond butter, go for it. But it takes me like 20 minutes, so I'm not about to be doing that. So the baking thing with the almond butters. Applesauce 100% is your friend. Over Thanksgiving, I made a lot of cookies for people, but I was like, I'm not making my healthy cookies. Once again, they're not gonna appreciate it, but I can help buy it a little bit. In the cookie recipes, they would call for three fourths of a cup of oil or half of a cup of butter. I just replaced that with full on applesauce. They didn't know applesauce all the way and applesauce is so much cheaper. Oh, I didn't even say what I was talking about. If a recipe calls for like half of a cup or a cup of peanut butter or almond butter, I normally do half of the nut butter and then half of applesauce because I'm like, I'm not putting a whole cup of that in there. That's like half the jar or the whole one. You do half of each and you can't even tell a difference. Just try it. Even in your stinging bagged cookies, just try it. I feel like I really should have said this in the beginning. Now when it comes to living the lifestyle really implementing being healthy and sticking to it positive effects on your body from eating healthy one you could literally eat all day and not feel bad or at least i could sometimes i catch myself eating so much and i'm like ali you need to take a step back just because you're not feeling it doesn't mean you need to eat yeah you feel great but do not take advantage of that if you're not hungry don't eat if you just are really craving some girl eat it that's another thing give in to your cravings okay maybe try and steer away from them with one thing but then if that one thing doesn't do it don't go like eating 12 other things try and cure that craving and then just end up eating that just eat it right when you get the craving so then it goes away and you don't try and go off track 20 times i've definitely done that and also at social events if you want to eat oreos if you want to eat brownies last night i had three brownies and a little wafer stick thing because I was like, I used to eat those when I was a kid, I'll try that. And I ate a million pretzels. Okay, you just gotta have some days, especially whenever you know that that's coming up. Maybe just eat really healthy that day and then that night, just go at it. <laughs> Some people are social drinkers. I'm a social eater. <laughs> going along with the cravings, if you don't eat sweets, you're not gonna crave them. I know that could sound hard to believe. I used to literally be a crazy candy addict. I literally had at least five pieces of candy a day. The main thing that I crave now is just chocolate. If I even try to eat like a candy sort of thing, I'm like, that wasn't worth it. It's just not as good. Like I want me some good chocolate. If you don't eat it, you don't crave it. Also, another tip if you are living at home or living with someone else, make sure that your food is separate. It just really helps. Whenever my food was mixed in with everyone else's, you're seeing like those other things that are bad for you like and you're gonna wanna reach for them. But if you have a shelf, mine's the very bottom shelf, but hey, it's a shelf. And when I go into the pantry, I look at the bottom shelf. I don't look at the whole thing. That's a really big thing. Get you your own shelf. And yeah, that's pretty much it. The main thing is just to listen to your body. If you want something, eat it. Don't be too hard yourself if you are then you're gonna feel deprived and that's not what this is about this is about just making yourself feel better and doing what's best for your body I have subscribed to so many people since I started eating healthy because they just have such good recipes and yes a majority of them are vegan but that's just because a lot of the vegans that I watch focus on whole food eating and you can easily replace tofu with chicken I'm not the biggest tofu fan I don't really vibe with it I'll link a few of my favorite people down below and yeah hopefully this wasn't too long of a video I hope you 
y'all enjoyed this. If you do want to see how to save money while eating healthy, just let me know down below because I've learned a few things. Let me know what other healthy eating related topics you want me to do. I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, I would love it if you subscribe down below and please give this video a big thumbs up. It means so much to me. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!